Welcome to a fantastic edition of Rebellion's Educational Series. We're looking at computer vision and the enterprise with a brilliant computer vision scientist, Devaki Raj, who I have been reading all about the last few days and have just been blown away by your work. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. Of course, thank you for having me. It's really exciting. I know the honor is all ours. So tell us about Crowd AI, awesome company. You know, what was the genesis of this? Yeah, so at Crowd AI, we aim to get computer vision in the hands of non-data scientists, right? If you're a subject matter expert in your imagery and video, you should be using our tool to better and more easily extract objects of interest from any imagery and video you're used to. So that's that's primarily the goal of what we're doing at Crowd AI is democratizing access to computer vision and computer vision technology. Do you want to give a layman's example for our viewers? Of course. So for example, right now we work with one of the largest roof tile manufacturers in the world, and they want to empower their production line manufacturers, people that work at the operations floor to be able to quickly and automatically train models to identify, for example, paint splatter or you know, incorrectly manufactured roof tiles quicker so they don't actually have to throw away this excess mm -hmm you know, excess roof tile material. And this is just only one example. Another example is a customer is working with us that is one of the largest beer manufacturers. They wanna know fill line. And so they wanna empower the people that are on the line that know that subject matter the best to be able to train models that on CrowdAI's platform. So across, across the board, both satellite, across satellite imagery, production line imagery, cell phone camera imagery, um, really we're agnostic. No, I, I'm biased because Rebellion altered a computer vision algo to make our economic forecasting. My partner Spencer's uh, thesis advisor was uh, Jan LeCun at NYU, which was very fortuitous. But you know, computer vision is fantastic. You know, one of my friends, uh, Peter Dahlstrom, senior partner at McKinsey, also the chief science officer, actually told me that computer vision is the technology he's most excited about right now. Yeah, and I'm, I'm really excited about computer vision because I think what people don't understand is there's a lot of sources of imagery and video that it's already being taken passively, right? There's surveillance cameras out there, there's satellite imagery out there. Um, but now with the, you know, with the advent and, and the proliferation of cell phone cameras, there is literally video and imagery data at the hands of every single person out there. Um, and so we should be able to use that imagery and, and, and video to make the lives of people a lot easier um, and augment people's workflow. Well, quick question before we get to more crowd AI. I've got a number of computer vision uh, students, both graduate and undergraduate. Would you give any recommendations for what they should study, what they should look at, what type of projects they should consider pursuing? Yeah, so actually the way we think about it is a little bit different. Um, our platform is built for non-data scientists. I honestly think when, when I first got into computer vision, I was taught the basics of statistics. Then we moved into machine learning and then we moved into computer vision. Um, there's actually a great woman that's, um, that's at Google, Kazi Kozarov, Kozarov. By the way, our viewers should know that you are a former Googler, which obviously is very impressive. And you know, up on top of you know having a master's from Oxford. Thank you. No, I appreciate it. But she does a really good job of explaining like the fundamentals of statistics because if you really understand statistics, you could better understand you know all the other architectures and AI um, after that. And so I, I really think that the best thing is to spend some time with the statistics book, um, and then you could build up your fundamentals up to to better understanding computer vision. What about small companies? How can can they use your product? Or is your product really only for gigantic Fortune 500 companies who will have you come in and you know build a program for them? Yeah, so our platform is end to end. It's a data management tool where you can um, bring in data from various cloud providers or on premise. It's a annotation tool for labeling both full motion video as well as um, still imagery. It's automatically based on the training data you've collected. Um, automatically kicking off models that we deem is best for that particular problem set and that particular imagery type. And it's model testing, evaluation, and production. We sell both to large companies that have imagery and video as well as small companies. In fact, we're doing a lot of academic partnerships like you right now to arm essentially the next generation of the workforce with these tools to better understand, understand computer vision. We're agnostic. As long as you have imagery and video, 
you should be able to use our platform. It's funny you mention that because I've been working with my friend Jim Liu, a, a Johns Hopkins professor, on a, a now casting system, looking at YouTube uh, links for various major cities around the world to show mask usage. You know, yeah. essentially, you know, we look at uh, Times Square and we say, you know, mask usage is sixty-five percent over the last thirty days. It's been, you know, look at the chart. So, is it, you know, could you guys help our project there? Oh, easily. We would love to just provide you our platform, especially because I've seen that Times Square, Times Square uh, surveillance camera footage, and they've got a couple of other feeds that I've seen around that people have been testing our platform for to, to automatically identify mask, no mask, um, and then count the individuals that are wearing masks. So yeah, I would love to, I would love for people to use our platform for all these other types of data sets that are just on the internet right now to, to solve or to answer questions that they find interesting. So were, were you at Google and you had an aha moment, like I need to get into computer vision and you know say goodbye to my colleagues? Um, yeah, so actually I was lucky enough to work on this team called Google Energy. I don't know if you know about Project Sunroof, but essentially what they were taking was Google obviously took a lot of aerial photos and then they were using those aerial photos to determine if roofs were good candidates for solar panel installation, right? So a bunch of different data was brought in, right? It could be from, you know, sun, sun angle, time of day, size of roof, et cetera. And then it would make a calculation, if there, or there's vegetation encroachment, it would make a calculation as to would you be saving money if you actually installed solar panels? What I realized is that a lot of consumers were signing up for that. You, you and me, people that, are, that, that um, had homes or people that knew people that had homes to then install solar panels based on these calculations. But what was more interesting is that companies would start using our platform to see who they could sell to. Um, you know, solar panel insulation companies were using the platform, energy companies were using the platforms, and even insurance companies were using the platform to better understand um, under, understand their users or understand the people that um, that they insured or what, ha what have you. And so I realized that there's so much data locked up in imagery and video. If you can unlock that um, in a scalable manner for enterprises, there's a very large company to be made. And that's kind of where our origin started. I love it. I think that's absolutely where I would want to be if I were a computer vision entrepreneur. I, I, I don't think you could be more right. You know, we've ever been in the last four years, probably published 1,200 or 1,500 articles and computer vision is something I do a lot of and I've been looking at of computer vision for enterprise, unlocking that data, as you mentioned, is such a fantastically brilliant idea and you know uh, you know being on the autism scale i, I don't know how to be uh you know I, I, I don't know how to not be blunt at all times and so i i have to say exactly what i'm thinking but you know the amount of data that hasn't been touched with computer vision it's funny i started working with the government and they joke about you know how 80 to 90 percent of their data hasn't been looked at at all and it just sits around but then when you imagine the amount of video data on top of that uh, just you know wow Exactly. And I want to talk to you about two different use cases. So we've had the honor and privilege to work with the US government to do um, specifically for Cal Fire and Air National Guard during wildfires to automatically map wildfires from government assets. So as a wildfire is happening, they use CrowdAI's algorithms to map out where the wildfire is. And the thing about wildfire is that it spreads extremely quickly. It could spread you know, miles in a couple of hours. And so you don't have enough people on the ground to actually see the extent of the fire. So if you fly a drone over and use CrowdAI's algorithms to automatically map the edges of the fire and send those polygons to firefighters at 40 frames per second, right? You're providing them with on the ground knowledge they previously had to wait hours for because nobody could really understand the extent of the fire. So we've had the privilege and honor to do that. And um, the work that we do- That is the coolest thing I've heard in so long. It reminds me of the Goldbergs episode where they have a, you know, a, a point where one of the children gets lost without ways as a pizza delivery boy. And how in the 1980s, you know, we would get lost down roads because all we had were maps. And the idea that firemen are so blind in fighting these mega fires and you could unlock you know, with, without a doubt, an observational ability for them to actually know where things are moving. People don't realize how blind these firefighters are and how just, yeah. you know, inefficient we generally are dealing with them. It's it's really a shame. I, I, I love this. So of tell course. me about your satellite imagery. What percent of, can you give an idea what percent of your data is satellite imagery? 
Yeah, so we actually work with customers across the board. Um, honestly, it's split across satellite imagery, aerial imagery, um, as well as drone video footage, um, hardware on you know production line systems, and then cell phone cameras and surveillance cameras. So we've got a pretty even split across these five use cases because we work across a variety of different verticals. So for example, we work with a pharma company to do pill counting after they get pills back um, from clinical trials, and that's taken off of, you know, uh, clinical trial folks' cell phone cameras. We work with a large, you know, as I mentioned, a, a roof tile manufacturer and a beer manufacturer for uniform data that comes off of a fixed video camera. We actually work with an oil and gas company, and this oil and gas company um, has, you know, surveillance cameras over their oil fields because they want to know if a cow is on their field or a car that shouldn't be there. So really our platform is, is very flexible for different types of imagery and video. As long as you have a subject matter expert that could look at the imagery and video, make a determination, i.e. create training data, then we take that and help automatically create a model that then gets deployed either on the edge or in cloud or do, does batch inferencing. That's really how, we're, how we think we could crack getting computer vision into enterprise. You have to get it as close to the hands of the subject matter experts that look at imagery and video as possible. No, no, definitely without a doubt. What about augmented reality? Would you ever con consider seeing yourself moving to that uh, horizontal or, or um, it seems to lend naturally, but maybe I'm yeah, wrong. Yeah, definitely. I think that's something that we could we could start expanding into, but really in computer vision, we could go deeper. And right, right now in computer vision, we're solving the what? Is this defective? What is wrong? You know, you know what what is is anomalous about this particular image. But we want to start going deeper um, into the how. So imagine a world in which we pair the computer vision. Oh, I see you know a crack in a bottle or a or a low fill line, and going back to understanding the in the entire process why it's happening. So bringing in sensor data, you know, heat, humidity, time of day. Who are the operators that were working on it? You know, so I think starting to bring more tabular data and so a different type of machine learning, not just deep learning computer vision, but bringing in other types of statistical analysis into more holistically helping the under enterprise actually truly gain value um, and cost savings. Is there an area of the enterprise that you think has been least tapped? So, so that's really interesting. We've seen a lot of adoption from manufacturers. We've seen a lot of adoption from people that have to better understand process around um, kind of surveillance cameras. Um, where it's been least tapped from a computer vision perspective, I think is a lot of large enterprises have thousands of tens of thousands of employees. That's really our sweet spot. Imagine a world in which we could open up our training data platform and that every day, you know, every single claims adjuster at that company, which are thousands at insurance companies, could just spend five minutes creating annotations. Then you can quickly create deep learning models and computer vision models off of their subject matter expert expertise much faster than anything that's been done before. Because, you know, even if you look at these open source data sets, right, people, which people rely on a lot, they don't have insurance specific use cases or manufacturing specific use cases. So I think the thing that hasn't really been tapped as much from the enterprise side is leveraging your gigantic employee pool to create training data that's focused in your vertical, focused on that subject matter expertise and quickly being able to create training data. And I think the reason that's because is because right now, the data science teams at these companies are over leveraged, right? They're creating models for financial data or creating models for computer vision or creating you know, all these different types of data science use cases that they're tapped into. But if we can arm a subject matter expert that looks at the imagery and video with tools to automate it, then you're freeing up data science teams while also empowering this massive workforce to essentially upscale. And that's, I think that's where, that's where we think that there is a gap that we could fill. Wonderful. Well, this was a fantastic uh, episode and I really appreciate you coming on. And Crowd AI is, is that, that's the website they should go to, crowdai.com? Perfect, exactly. Wonderful. Well, you stay safe during these crazy times and you will. Thank you so much. Pleasure is ours.